Welcome back. I'm moving on to our first segment for today. As President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi took his oath for a third presidential term at the new administrative capital on Tuesday in the presence of high-level state officials and parliament members. To discuss this in more details over the phone, we have Dr. Hassan Wagi, a professor of political science. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, doctor. So first of all, um, talking about the speech delivered by President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, especially um, when uh, it comes to uh, different points uh, focusing on the national cooperation. Uh, we have, of course, that encompassing uh, politics, uh, foreign affairs, economic reform, social uh, protection, and urban development. <coughs> Oh, yes. Uh, uh, on the occasion of uh, this new term, yeah, the president has uh, confirmed the, the basic maxims uh, for foreign policy and for international relations, uh, international relations orientation, of course. Uh, and uh, he, he mentioned and he stressed several things uh, which is very important as maxims for the Egyptian foreign policy to support the peace and the stability, uh, to, to confirm the, the principle of uh, respecting international law and human international law. Uh, also, he emphasized very much the concern for the economic dimensions of the international relations. Uh, these are uh, some of the maxims he mentioned. Uh, and in addition to that, yes, uh, he, he also... Uh, made something very important about the independence of the Egyptian uh, decision-making process, uh, along with uh, uh, concern, the very deep concern with the Arabic domain. Uh, Egypt concern, is concerned with, the, with all Arab relations because this is a vital field and vital domain for its uh, uh, foreign policy, along, other, along, uh, along with other domains. So how do you see uh, Egypt's uh, future uh, foreign policy uh, in the upcoming period? Yes, when it comes uh, to the future, of course, there is a very important concern for Egyptian foreign policy uh, to encourage investments, of course, and to enhance the economic situation in Egypt, uh, enhancing the democratic uh, situation and uh, changing a lot of things that need to be changed uh, for uh, for such uh, a point which is very important uh, you know democracy is not a uh, it's not an innocent copy uh, so we have to work with it and we have to uh, to be creative about it uh, to to move forward in that direction also um, when it comes to the <coughs> citizenship, citizenship and the rights of citizens. Uh, this is a concern that should be treated. Also, uh, uh, talking about, of course, the holistic uh, developmental processes. Uh, when it comes to future points, as you mentioned, of course, there are several circles uh, of international uh, efforts that must be exerted in that direction. Well, of course, the national dialogue uh, proved to be very successful and achieved a lot during the past period. Well, how do you see uh, the importance of the national dialogue, especially um, during the upcoming period, of course, including also uh, the role of the youth? Yes, <coughs> when it comes to this dimension, uh, yes, we, we, we mentioned something about the Arabic domain. But let me say that uh, Egypt is very concerned, uh, and the dialogue also revolves uh, within these uh, circles, six circles. <coughs> Egypt is concerned about the Arab circle, of course, the African circle, and the Islamic circle. And by the way, these three domains or three circles were of interest during Nasser era. But uh, during uh, uh, these days and uh, during in the era of uh, President Fattah, he added to that, he, concerned, he is very concerned about these three, 
circles because they are constants of uh, Egyptian foreign policy. But uh, we added also uh, Asian circles, uh, cooperating with Asian continent, especially China and emerging uh, Asian power. Also, we have uh, lately uh, signed a very important uh, uh, declaration with uh, another important circle, which is the European Mid Partnership. <laughs> Egypt and the Europe signed a strategic uh, declaration uh, and with six the president came to Cairo, which tells you about how Egypt is concerned about uh, developing this uh, Euromed circle uh, because uh, we are sharing uh, the same sea. We are in the north and we are the south of that Mediterranean Sea. And uh, there is a very good historic relation uh, we must enhance and uh, we must uh, all look for the future with uh, hope and uh, much more strategic cooperation. Well, it is clear enough and also as mentioned by President El-Sisi that Egypt adopted new strategies uh, to maximize um, the economic resources and capabilities and also, of course, uh, referring to the pivotal role uh, that the private sector will play as well, right? Yes, uh, of course, uh, there have been calls regarding liberating the Egyptian uh, economy and uh, getting it uh, uh, to, to a wider perspective and wider uh, future trends. And of course, uh, without the uh, private sector, something very, uh, very important is lacking. So uh, now the main concern is to activate the role of uh, the economic uh, sector, especially uh, not the economic sector, on the, on, the, on the level of the state, yes, but also on the private sector, which is very, very important step to be taken, because private sector is extremely uh, important in the equation of getting developed. Well, uh, President Sisi also, uh, during his speech, uh, actually, um, uh, talked about uh, the uh, safeguarding Egypt's uh, national security and uh, also uh, talking about the Egyptian borders. So how do you see this uh, political message, especially during this critical period of time where we have uh, many turbulence uh, taking place all around the borders and, of course, uh, the current situation as well in Gaza? Yes, uh, I think that if we look at the uh, previous year, uh, the president and the political leadership in Egypt really was keen to handle uh, all these troubles with a great care and a great uh, uh, precision. Uh, you know, uh, there was problems in Libya, but uh, we, we just used the deterrence rather than getting involved. Um, when the water uh, was threatened in Ethiopia, we insisted on uh, complex diplomacy uh, till we solved and resolved the issue diplomatically. But we were also backed by our military power. Our military power is there and it is being developed greatly, but uh, it is not for uh, misuse. It is for uh, putting the red lines and uh, trying to uh, get diplomacy to do the job uh, with back the by the our Egyptian uh, armed forces. So I think that uh, the, the president showed a great deal of wisdom when it came to so many uh, conflicts uh, around us because we don't want to add problems uh, to the area. We'd like to be part of the uh, solution of the problem uh, and uh, Egypt has greatly uh, exerted effort uh, towards uh, trying to self settle all these disputes and uh, it is a continuous continuing of effort till now and uh, we hope that it will work out because uh, the trouble are so huge and the intervention uh, power uh, from outside the area is there and uh, this is needs a great deal of wisdom and a great deal of dealing with all these uh, very, very complex uh, calculations. 
Well, also, uh, the president uh, talked about the uh, importance of agriculture and increasing production and adopting uh, technologies and uh, methods for working more uh, in agriculture in particular to uh, provide safety for food for the Egyptian citizens as well. Uh, yes, I think uh, that this is a very important domain because Egypt uh, was used to be called uh, an agricultural country, you remember. Uh, so uh, let us uh, revitalize that. The potentiality <laughs> of getting agriculture growing is extremely important for food security, of course. And the, 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 the world crisis that really erupted in the last uh, few years showed that uh, uh, there is a problem of food, there is a problem of logistics, uh, you know, the Ukraine-Russian uh, war uh, showed us the problem of logistics for the entire world. Uh, so we have to rely on ourselves and to, re to rely on the nearby countries to have uh, strong uh, cooperation. And I think when it comes to agriculture, we mentioned something about uh, in the declaration with the European Union. There is a great deal of uh, cooperation uh, for food security between Egypt and the European Union, especially Italy. So I think uh, uh, we are working hard on this, and the President is very keen to uh, ensure uh, the food security, of course. So what do we really need, or uh, in other words, when can Egypt depend on local manufacturing programs, uh, in boosting foreign currency revenues and uh, creating more and more job opportunities? Yeah, I think this is a, a very complicated uh, problem, but uh, there is a great deal of effort being exerted in that direction. Uh, and I think there, are, uh, there, there must be some out-of-the-box solutions. Uh, I think there must be uh, an emphasis to be put on the uh, small business uh, uh, for, for, for energizing a great deal of number of people. Uh, to, to get into that business, uh, small business, uh, is uh, a key for success for the international development and for many experiences. You know, many experiences all over the world, uh, successful ones, I mean, uh, relied on this small business and, uh, administration in their countries, and they succeeded because of that, because this is uh, uh, takes a great deal of, uh, of portions <laughs> Uh, from the economic portion. Well, the state adopted uh, many initiatives uh, to provide social security for Egyptian citizens. Whether we are talking about Tekeful Wakaroma or, uh, of course, uh, health uh, issues or even the uh, health insurance. So how far are these initiatives important? And of course, uh, the president also uh, promised to continue with this to provide all what the Egyptian citizens need in the future. Yes, uh, I think this is, uh, this is an important, uh, important dimension in getting the, in nourishing the concept of uh, citizenship. Uh, and uh, nourishing the concept of uh, social responsibility. Uh, and I think that uh, working on this uh, important initiative, which, you, by the way, were, uh, were welcomed and uh, hailed by many uh, uh, other countries uh, in the world, uh, and to consider that as good uh, initiatives and good experiences. But, uh, of, co of course, I think that the need is, uh, is larger and uh, the state is working much more on enlarging uh, the scope of these uh, very important and very vital initiatives. When it comes to the role of youth uh, played uh, so far, and we have seen actually an uh, unprecedented achievement in this respect, where the president was very much keen in uh, bringing the youth and talking to them uh, directly and opening for them uh, a new door just for transparent discussions and also taking benefit and using uh, these youth in many of the um, leading uh, positions and decision-making uh, positions as well. 
Yes, uh, I think uh, this is also another important dimension because, you know, uh, we used to suffer uh, for in the past from all the people uh, everywhere and no place for uh, the youth. And I, I think that I, once I wrote uh, how to bridge the gap between generation or generation gap uh, crossing uh, is very needed. Uh, and I think that uh, we started uh, out, uh, the president started by uh, encouraging this uh, important dimension because uh, the president himself mentioned several times that uh, more than half of the population uh, are youth. And uh, when it comes to this, it's a great wealth because uh, we know that uh, there are some European countries and some uh, advanced countries, uh, uh, foreign countries, are suffering from uh, lack of the power of the youth. So I think to use the power of the youth is a very important and very wise step to be taken uh, in enhancing the potentialities of uh, a great nation like uh, Egypt and Salva. Well, it is clear that uh, actually we have many uh, challenges uh, during this period. Actually, we are talking about uh, political, economic, um, different uh, issues uh, taking place uh, all around the world in addition to the regional uh, challenges uh, taking place as well. So it is uh, quite clear that this period will need the different kinds of responsibilities uh, uh, or different kinds of methods uh, to just uh, be able to confront all <coughs> these challenges uh, together. Yes, uh, of course, uh, uh, if you look at the map uh, of interactions, Yes, you can find uh, a great, uh, great challenges uh, waiting for the entire nation of Egypt. And I think that the, these challenges are very clear uh, in our border. Egypt is keen to establish peace and stability uh, inside Egypt and outside Egypt in the entire area and in the entire world, actually. And the zero-sum mentality is... Uh, is there uh, <coughs> in foreign power playing uh, a lot of uh, games uh, which are based on zero mentality. And I think uh, this has uh, <coughs> made many wars erupted. Uh, uh, actually, they are, they are not that motivated wars. And uh, there are some, something wrong happening uh, that increase the challenges for the entire world, not for Egypt only, of course. And I think that uh, from here, uh, he, the president of Egypt called for reforming, uh, deep reform for the United Nations to have a powerful international uh, organization to help in uh, managing all these conflicts and uh, anticipate the conflicts. Look, it's very important to, to know that uh, we need to have uh, crisis management, and we, we need to have crisis anticipation. We have to anticipate a lot of things before they happen. So we, we need to work on crisis prevention, anticipation, and the prevention too. And I think the Egyptian foreign policy uh, try to, 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 to do a great deal of effort in that direction. Uh, Dr. Hassan Wagi, Professor of uh, Political Science, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, moving on to a short break, then we'll be back.